What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of East versus West. Uh, your dose of both coasts. I'm your host, Anthony. And I'm your co-host, Eddie. And we are drinking today on this beautiful Friday evening, at least over here on the West Coast. It's Friday night on the East Coast. Um, and today we are talking about the new updated speculation maps from HN Nightmares on Twitter. Go give them a follow if you guys like speculations for HHN on either coast. Um, he usually is pretty spot on with his speculations. So if you guys don't want the event potentially spoiled for you, I would recommend not giving a look, but still give him a follow. Um, uh However, if you guys are into the speculation mood and kind of want an early preview of what might be coming to the event, then uh, HN Nightmares definitely puts out great maps. Um, so yesterday, if you guys watched yesterday's video, Sammy and I talked about the Hollywood version. And I know Eddie on his channel talked a little bit about the Orlando version. Um, and uh, so this is going to be kind of a new thing because both uh, maps got a 3.5 update as of this morning. Um, and it's just basically changing around locations of where stuff is. Um, so we're going to start on the Hollywood side this time. Usually we, we go, uh, we go East coast first, but today we're going to start on the West coast cause there's not very much to talk about as far as what's coming to the event and, uh, you know, what we have and, and location wise. So we'll start off from the top, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It remains in the water world queue, uh, property that I'm very much looking forward to coming to the event. Um, and I believe that's going to be a shared property on both coasts. Um, so that is one I'm, I'm very much looking forward to coming to the event. I, like I said in the, uh, in, uh, the Hollywood video that we made, I believe that a Titan of Terror should be represented at the event every other year, if not every year. Um, and it's, it's cool to see, uh, Leatherface make his return. I think the last time he was at the event was 2017, I believe. Uh, so it's been some time since we've seen Leatherface at the event, or 2018, I don't remember, one of the two years. But it's been some time since we've seen Leatherface at the event, so it's good to see him coming back. And like I said before, I would like this uh, property to be based around the 2003 movie, which was the uh, rebooted version of the movie that gave more of an origin story of who Leatherface was, and it was a little bit more gory and violent. Uh, what do you think about Texas Chainsaw Massacre since that's on both maps? Oh, I, I love the idea of Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw Massacre. And we talked about this on the last East versus West before any of these maps were released. Right. About just any Titans of Terror, um, how they've, some of the event has kind of been built on their backs. So they deserve a spot at the event. And honestly, it's it always makes for, for a great house or maze, however you want to call it on whatever coast you're on. Right. Um, they, they're always great. I don't think I've ever been to a any of the Titans houses and said, this was whack. So um, I'm excited to see it. Leatherface is, is, uh, is a classic. I, I think it brings in uh, a good fan base. Um, you know, a, a little bit of a diversion from the fan base that we've seen recently, or some of these houses may bring the more pop based ones. <laughs> it looks like on the uh, Orlando side, it's, it's located right in front of the uh, Hollywood rip ride rocket. Um, which I don't know what building that's usually that that is. You you might have more of a understanding of what that is than I do. Let me see in front of Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. In the middle part of it, at least. Oh, it's so letter B. B. That's typically, I believe, a soundstage. Okay. It's a it's a, a line that goes through there to the back. That's the letter B is uh, Jimmy Fallon. Okay. So yeah, that's coming to the event and. Uh, like Eddie said, that's in the Jimmy Fallon area, um, right in front of Rip Rod Rocket. And for us, it's in the Waterworld queue. Of course, that was early speculated to be Candyman. Now it's looking more to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, so that's really good. Um, of course, the Walking Dead attraction making its return. It's been closed for some time now. And like I said on yesterday's video, I am looking forward to this uh you know, coming out, uh, coming back because I was not one to get to experience the final day of the attraction. So it will be good to see the attraction again. And I think it gives it more of more love because now that the attraction is going to be, you know, now that it's full time, it's closed uh, and it's only looking like it's going to be coming around for, you know, Horror Nights. It's kind of it's kind of got that feel again for maybe more fans and more people will walk through it. And yeah. hopefully the, the hope is that they change a couple of scenes that update towards the newer season. Um, but we'll see. Uh, nothing's been confirmed yet as to what they're going to be doing with that. Um, but I'm excited to see 
just it make a return because like i said i didn't get to experience it at the end and i would love to just experience it one last time if this is the last year it's going to be at hhn again that's not something that's been floating around either i just i don't know what's going to happen with the walking dead attraction after this year's hhn if they decide to gut it and redo something else who knows yeah um uh, but to kind of add to that um in, in any other year i kind of would have given you guys a little bit of uh slack for for having the, the Walking Dead, because, you know, more zombies than ever type of thing. Yes. Um, just joking around. But um, if you watched the Hauntline's recent video with Zombie Chris, Zombie Chris brought up a, a good point. The Walking Dead actually is probably one of the longest-running uh, IPs at Halloween Horror Nights. And yeah. in, in uh, Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando, specifically, uh, you could speak on, on Hollywood, it was around for, like, five years straight. It even was, like, a roaming horde, had a... Uh, took over the whole entire event one yep. year as far as the scare zones. And I can't say that I ever went through a Walking Dead house that wasn't amazing. So yep. um, I, I, I will give them their, their credit this year, even though it, it may not be too much of a different attraction from what you've probably seen. Maybe a little bit of a different attraction. But, um, yeah, you know what? I, I miss the Walking Dead. The The Terminus house was probably one of my favorite houses yep. at House of Horror Nights Orlando. And just the being able to walk through a season after having watched the season was always something that was it was a, a special experience. Right. I mean, it's always good to see The Walking Dead represented. I mean, you, if me and you were both fans of the earlier seasons, so you know, to see those seasons come to life was really cool. I have not really been keeping up too much with the the later seasons, but I'm thinking about going back and rewatching them. I always say that it's never it never happens. <laughs> um, Cast on it before, remember? <laughs> yeah. Um, the Haunting of Hill House, another speculated uh, property that is coming to the event, and it's further been um, kind of confirmed in a way because there's been uh, talks of the production of the HHN commercials being filmed. So uh, one of the – a lot of it had to do with Orlando, but one of the things that they filmed was something with the bent neck lady. So that kind of further confirmed uh, Haunting of Hill House coming to HHN this year. And, of course, if that does come, we can see that obviously being the one of the big staple properties of the event this year and probably being one of the main kind of um, – advertisements for both coasts this year um with of course their partnership with netflix this would be of course the third year of them partnering with netflix to bring a house to life um the first two years being stranger things and now we're moving to haunting hill house so it's going to be interesting to see um what haunting hill, haunting the hill house brings to the table i mean me and you've talked about this before um on our arm uh, on the 3.5 updated speculated map it is now located in the soundstage 29 area which is right in back of transformers where stranger things was housed at last year and the year before so it's going to be interesting to see what they do to bring this maze to life honestly yeah and it says a lot about the from what you just said it says a lot about where they're putting it uh stranger things was a staple house um, which meant it got a prime location. If this is replacing the location where Stranger Things was before, that means that they're going to put time and money into it. Yeah. Uh, the the property itself is one that, for I think at least uh, hardcore horror fans, it's going to hit home and they're going to really be looking forward to it. I, I've said this once and I'll say it again. The... Victorian Haunted Mansion is just way too easy to make amazing. So I can't see this failing us. I, yeah. The Broke Neck Lady and all the other characters that we see during that series are pretty freaking amazing, pretty freaking yeah. terrifying. So uh, this is this is definitely going to probably be – definitely going to probably be. I hate when I say that. It's, it just <laughs> sounds so contradictory. But this is probably going to be my number one when it comes down to to doing our top top list you know i think i might agree with you on that so it's it's leather it's letter h on your guys's map where's that usually how what was that house to last year let me see h h where are you h oh h um h was the uh monsters okay so that was Universal Monsters last year. Yep. Um, so that's interesting that they're kind of moving Universal Monsters, it looks like, this year, um, which we'll get to in a, in a second. Um, but the next IP that's coming to at least Hollywood this year, and it's not looking like it's coming to Orlando this year, which I know a lot of people have been kind of shitting on this one a little bit just to see how they're going to pull this off. Uh, but I'm very much for it until I walk through it, then I'll be the critique of that. But that is the Invisible Man, and it's also been moved uh, to M4, which is the Mummy Q. Um, on this 3.5 map, 
so I'm excited for the Invisible Man. I think there's a lot of scenes they can work with, and I and if they use a lot of the mirror effects, like they used a uh, perfect example that Sammy brought up in our uh, little uh, episode that we talked about was of course the mirror uh, trick they used on the on the library ghost from Ghostbusters. You know, one minute she was a real person, and the next minute it was actually like a, a scary person. You know, which I thought was really cool. So if they use a lot of those mirror effects to kind of show the person in the suit and then him just disappearing, I think this maze can be executed really well, especially yeah. if they use that throughout the maze because you can be he can be in like one place you look one place he's there and then you look he's disappeared and then you turn the next corner and he's like somewhere else you know what i mean so like i think this maze if they use a lot of those effects and and really kind of um execute a lot of the iconic scenes from that film i think we should be okay and i think this maze can be a really good property yeah and i, I kind of i i hear what people are saying as far as like their their concerns about this particular maze. And to speak on what you just said, I was just thinking about it as you said it. If they're using mirror effects, it'd be really cool to see like a mirror effect where like they, they cause a ripple through the mirror that kind of looks uh, humanoid shaped. You know what I'm saying? So it looks yeah. like something's there, but it's not there at the same time. That'd be kind of cool. Um, but I, I think sometimes the houses that have the most questions behind how they're gonna do it tend to be the ones that, that surprise you. Um, right. But I, I understand where some of the the naysayers are coming from, and right. um, I, I mean I, I'm not holding my breath for this one. I did like the movie a lot, and it was a crazy cool take on the Invisible Man. Right. Um, in particular, that one scene that you and I have talked about, where they're having dinner. Oh was, God. Was crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this is one of those that I, I'll leave up in the air. I, I, I think can be the the surprising come from behind. It'd probably be like one of the underdogs of the event, to be honest. Like I, that's what I'm thinking. This will be like the underdog. This or this next maze we're going to talk about, which is another shared property on the on both coasts this year, which is Billie Eilish. Of course, when this was first rumored to be announced at the event, none of the HHN fans were on board for it. I know there's a, there's a handful of fans out there that are big fans of Billie Eilish and really looking forward for this one to come. Um, as uh, a guy who's been going to the event, this will be my 10th year this year. Um, I, I've, I've been through a couple music mazes. You know, I was there for both years of Alice Cooper. I was there for Black Sabbath. I was there for uh, Slash's Clowns Maze. I was there for all the Universal Monster mazes, all the figure mazes. Um, Billie Eilish, again, I don't know, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't know any of her music, so I don't know how I feel about this coming to the event. However, I'm going to go in very open-minded on this event. Uh, on this particular maze because maybe it can blow me away. You know, I may not like the music, but I think visually it could be uh, a very interesting maze. Again, it's not something I would. It's not. It's not something that'd be my first choice, but I think it could be a really solid maze if, if done right. Um, from what I've been hearing rumors of, it's going to take place like inside of her head in her journal. So I guess she writes like a and draws like a lot of creepy stuff. So I guess that's basically what the the maze might be centered around. Um, and it makes more sense now because, of course, seen in the back lot where the Billie Eilish maze will be taking place in the Creep Show area, um, one of the facades looks like a book, uh, much like how Creep Show's facade looked last year. It was a giant comic book. So if they're gonna do that again with the whole Billie Eilish entering like her journal, entering her mind, it could be a very interesting maze. But like I said, I'm not really a huge fan of her music. I respect her as an artist, but I've never just been a fan of that genre of music so I, I don't know where i'll land as far as this uh maze goes i gotta really go through it to kind of judge it whether or not it may surprise me and it may be on my top three or it may uh, again just disappoint like i thought it was and and me be on the very bottom but as of right now it's on the very bottom of my uh, most anticipated show yeah. and um what, what i'll say about billy eilish is first and foremost uh, as a fan of the event i don't want to see that come to the event because not because I don't like Billie Eilish. I actually like some of her songs and I did a speculation video where I actually pointed out the fact that I really like a few of her songs, but I just don't see how she fits into the event. Right. For Orlando, maybe for the fountain show, that would be great. That's a, a great use of her. Right. Yeah. But for a maze or a house, once again, depending on what you want to call it, um, it becomes a little bit more difficult to kind of envision not because she can't be creepy. It's because technically this should be considered an IP. 
Yeah. It's going to be more of an original because really you can't connect with any of the things in there. Because yeah. what, what are they going to do? A, a house off of scenes of her music? That's not going to really work because not all of her music is scary. Yeah. Uh, really, very little of her music is scary. It's kind of, you know, monotone. Um, I, I guess it, it has kind of like a, a depressed feel to it. Not to say that her music is depressing, but it has like that monotone kind of like um, low energy feel. Yeah. Uh, I, I think she is amazing as an artist. So don't get me wrong there. I just don't see how in a maze or a house she fits in very well. Right. Uh, but it could be something that surprises us. I, I, I think the biggest issue that it runs into is just from from a, a big name like this, you expect an IP that you have something you could connect with. And right. that's something that we won't be able to do. Um, there, there's been other, just to kind of like relate back, um, there, there was another IP a while back, which was Penn and Teller. Yeah. And right in, in the beginning, you wouldn't think of Penn and Teller as uh, horror, but... The, they made it like a, a magic show, but like a horror magic show. So there was that that you could connect with. Like, how were they pulling off these magic tricks? Yeah. You know, with her, I just don't see it. But, you know, that's where you put it in the creative's hand and hope that they deliver. Yeah, this is letter this is letter J on your guys' map. Is that where Killer Clowns was housed at last year? Yep, Killer Clowns. Yeah. And the, the Shrek building, which typically tends to be one of the lesser of the houses. Okay. Hey, Killer Clowns was a good house. Killer Clowns, um, in hindsight, was an amazing house to walk through. Very scenic. Just yeah. not the scariest is all I would say. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Billie Eilish, uh, we'll see how that goes. And opinions may change come time we go to the event. So we'll see. Uh, another shared property. Uh, pretty much the only non-shared properties we have this year are Invisible Man and Walking Dead. Everyone, Everything else we share um, as far as the, the IPs go. Um, and that is Beetlejuice. That is luckily staying on the um, the speculated map uh, this far. And this is going to be located in the uh, in the metro sets. It looks like they're doubling up where the creep show uh, tent was last year, and that's going to be right behind Billie Eilish. So uh, that will be in that area. And I think with the success this year uh, or last year of Ghostbusters was kind of like the test run to see if they can do a horror comedy IP. I mean, I know a while back on. Um, you know, at HHN over here in Hollywood, they did a This is the End maze based around, you know, James Franco's, uh, uh, James Franco, Seth Rogen, you know, all those guys. Uh, it was a comedy horror kind of flick. So they did a, a maze based around that. And that was the last time they really touched up on comedy horror. Uh, and then they oh, they brought back, they brought Ash vs. Evil Dead, which is sort of a dark comedy horror. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, now we have, uh, you know, Ghostbusters killed it last year. A lot of people were really shitting on that maze as well. And it actually ended up being, like, the underdog of the event. Um, and now we got Beetlejuice coming to the uh, event. Now, I think they have a lot to work with Be with Beetlejuice because there is a lot of scenes that if you were to see, like, in real life, it'd probably be pretty scary. Yeah. Um, and not only that, though, the guy's hilarious. And I can see – I was talking to Sammy about this on our Hollywood video, too. We're known for doing a lot of Twitter passwords and, and they're, you know, them giving away stuff. So I can see this being that maze this year of a Beetlejuice or maybe like uh, Alec Baldwin's character and and his wife in the movie. Uh, they're standing out in the front maybe, and then you give them a password and they give you something. However, I don't know how that's going to be this year as, as far as the whole pandemic goes. If they're going to actually give away stuff this year, just because you know, just for the safety of the audience and the guests, uh, I don't know if they're going to do that this year. But if they are, that would probably be the maze they do it on. Um, Beetlejuice, though, I am very much looking forward to it. I have the pop, like, right there, if you can see it, but, um, the pop's right there. I bought that at the I Like Scary Movies event, um, and that was kind of, like, a good experience to, to really experience the movie in art form, which was really cool. What are your thoughts on Beetlejuice, man? Yeah, no, Beetlejuice, he, he's, he's been at the event in its, in its early stages, at least for Orlando, so I, I think this makes total sense, and definitely from a 30th year anniversary, yeah. um, and, you know, regardless of the comedy aspect of the movie, the movie is very horror. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the two owners of, of the house get killed and are haunting the house with this freaking, like, weird demon Beetlejuice, whatever, yeah. you know? Um, and, and some of the scenes are pretty damn terrifying, even though they kind of mix it in as, a, as like, a funny terrifying. Right. Um, I, I, I can't see this failing this is definitely it's a good comparison to to ghostbusters but i think 
just taking that that step closer to being more horror than actually comedy. Yeah. Uh, um, Ghostbusters to me was in my top five when when uh, before going to the event and after going to the event. So I, I could see this one fitting neatly into my top five. Um, right. This is letter I in yours, right next to um, Haunting a Hill House. Uh, so that'd be back to back right there. That uh, letter I was uh, Graveyard Games last year. Okay. Was that is that usually a good location for mazes? Yeah, that's a really good location. Both of those are just the the walk back is terrible. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the walk back. It looks like it's like a mile long just to get back there. <laughs> yeah, that's the the ET queue and okay. then like the Barney queue. Okay. Yeah, so we got Beetlejuice coming to the event. And the last shared property that we have coming to both events, which is going to be in the same place, at least for us last year, where uh, Universal Monsters Frankenstein meets the Wolfman was, of course, is Universal Monsters The Brides. Um, ours is going to be music by Slash, it looks like. We're teaming up with Slash again, and yours is just look like it's just going to be The Brides. Um, I kind of wish you guys would have gotten a Frankenstein meets the Wolfman treatment as well. Very solid maze last year, and I would like to see what Orlando's take would have been on that. But to see that you guys are going to have the brides, it's going to be a little good when we when we come down the road to do another podcast of compare and contrast of you know what had more better details and you know what you know what was better in yours, what was better in ours, you know that kind of thing. So I'm kind of glad we're getting that Universal Monsters the same for once this year. But um, music by Slash, I mean Slash has been doing the music for Universal Monsters the last two years, and it looks like people love the Monsters mazes. Um, I said it on the the Hollywood video that we made, but um, I'm thinking – it says Brides. That's plural usually. So um, I'm thinking that we're going to get Bride of Frankenstein and the Brides of Dracula. Um, I don't know if they're going to be facing off, but I think maybe one half will be Frankenstein's uh, – Bride of Frankenstein's uh, story, and then the Brides of Dracula will be the last half maybe or vice versa. Um, because at the top of my head, I can't really think of any other brides that are in the Universal Monsters universe other yeah. than those ones. Yeah, no, I can't say that I, I'm familiar with all the brides aside from those two. Yeah. Um, they, come, they come to mind instantly. But I, I think the fact that they they left it plural without being too specific is telling us that there will be other brides. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think it'll just be two. That just wouldn't make sense. But or at least in my mind. Um, yeah. But this this is one that. I'm looking forward to uh, Classic Monsters last year was great. And just because it says brides doesn't mean that there can't be some scenes with the brides and some of the original Classic Monsters. Right. Um, and this one is letter A. Is that the stage plaza they usually – is that where Ghostbusters was last year? That is – I believe that's Stranger Things. Stranger Things, A? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's letter A on your guys' map. Um, I think and that Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters. I think it was. I think it was Ghostbusters. Um, and M7 on our map is, of course, uh, where uh, Universal Monsters Frank Siamese the Wolfman was last year. So we'll see what happens, man. It look. It's looking good. Of course, we have Jabberwockies supposedly returning this year. Not really looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> the way I look at that show is a kind of air conditioning, sit down and relax kind of show. If I'm, if I'm feeling it that night. But other than that, I can care less about that show. Uh, no scare zones uh, have been announced on our end. Usually our scare zones are original, so are a little bit harder to kind of speculate those. So we'll see what happens. But let's move on to the last five on Halloween Horror Nights 30s speculation map. Um, of course, yours, the rest of the last five are all originals exclusively to uh, HHN Orlando. Uh, and you guys got one uh, scare zone that is being speculated and two shows. So, uh, yeah. Eddie, go ahead and take it over from here. Wait, question for you uh, before we move on. Um... I, I thought you guys had way more houses last year. We did. So this is the thing. Um, I don't know. Now, if you guys watch SoCal Exploring's video, he mentions that Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood usually has a separate budget for the event. And they made a ton of money last year. I do agree with that because a lot of nights were very sold out and very, like, max capacity and stuff. Um, I don't know what has happened since then till now. I mean, I don't know if... Um, with the whole pandemic going on that they had to uh, dive into that budget to kind of keep open or keep operations going or pay their employees. I don't know how that is. Usually we have around, I think, nine mazes, I believe. Um, so I don't know what is up this year with having six. But I, I've said this in the Hollywood video. I'd rather have six really well put together mazes than like ten kind of thrown together last minute mazes. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I get that. Um, just 
but from a perspective of where we're at in the world, more houses means more separation. Yeah. So that that's the only thing that that kind of like threw me for. However, a... we don't know how they're gonna social distance this this year. Yeah. We don't know if there's gonna be a virtual queue. We don't know if there's gonna be a limited tickets each night. We don't know what they're gonna do this year. We haven't been told any information on that yet. So I think they're just kind of waiting it out to see where we're gonna be around that time to fi- to figure out a system. They probably have a system ready to go if they need to use it. But I think they're just kind of holding off to see where we are by the time Horror Nights comes around. Yeah. All right, cool. So on the East Coast, I'm going to start off with uh, Pumpkin Originals. Okay. Or, you know, um, this one is is an interesting one because we've definitely had a lot of pumpkin themes scare zones. Uh, before N, the N scare zone has been pumpkin themes for the past God knows how many years um, no. up till last year. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and prior to that, you, you saw Trick or Treat there, which had a lot of pumpkin theming as well. And, yeah. and a, a few other ones that the, the name doesn't come to mind, but is definitely something that that could be a derivative of where this house is coming from. Pumpkin original. Uh, you know, it, it leaves a, a lot to speculation, but the the name and the the. What is it, a fruit or a vegetable? Pumpkin, I think, is a vegetable. <laughs> Obviously, this, this podcast is not about, uh, you know, vegetables or, or, or fruits. But Although, maybe a fruit because it had seeds. Usually, fruits have seeds. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, but it, it's one or the other. But the, the, the fruit or vegetable, whatever it is, is synonymous with that time of the year. Yeah. So that, that's kind of cool in itself. Um, I don't know what's what much to make of it besides the fact that it could potentially be a derivative of one of the scare zones that we've had in the past. What do you think? Um, the way I'm looking at it, I, I, one thing comes to mind, and that's the Pumpkin King, and that's usually Jack Skellington. But that's what comes to mind. Maybe they'll, they'll do something around that, or, or I, I don't know. It, it's really hard to tell. I mean, I'm not too familiar with the past of HHN in Orlando, so I can't really say much on this one. This one's kind of a mystery, and even to the – the hardcore fans out there, this one's kind of a mystery as well. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know yet. Hopefully it gets announced and maybe it's going to have something to do with um, maybe voodoo or maybe something of, of pumpkins coming to life. I, I don't know. Um, maybe yeah. they have bodies or something. Or they, The one thing that comes to mind, obviously, is, is a pumpkin head or maybe a headless horseman. Yeah, and I, I think there was also something in Slaughter Cinema. So it could be a, deriv- a derivative of Slaughter Cinema, but I'm not too sure. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. Um, next, and then uh, just to kind of go off of reference, where is that F? F? F is in the back area corner. Who was F? Oh, F was last year. I can't remember who was back there last year. Um, but those are the sprung tents. Um, so F, E, and G are are typically sprung tents in the back. Are they backstage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, the well, we'll get to it. Um, e is typically where where they've had the like Blumhouse mazes, and then G and F is the two sprung tents in the back. Um, and then one that I'm I'm actually really intrigued by, and it's in G, which is one of the sprung tents in the back, is Mannequin Theater. That just sounds dope. Um, thinking of walking through a room. I mean, and this scare has been used several times in in IP houses, right? right. Where you walk through a room and, you know, they, they're u- utilizing mannequins as well as actual actors, and you don't know which is which. Right. Um, it'd be cool if it was like, if they themed it kind of like uh, an abandoned shopping mall. Right. And you're walking through the shopping mall and there's mannequins like moving around and like you can't tell if that one's real did it just move did it not that'd be yeah. good uh, uh, i would like to also see this be maybe an expansion of slaughter cinema too did did uh yeah i mean uh i, I, I mean i know that there, there was no mannequin references and at least that i know of in slaughter cinema but it could be like something that is maybe a sequel to Slaughter. i don't know i mean but it, I, I see theater on it so I, i'm thinking it's going to either take place in like a an opera house or a or a, a movie theater of some sort. Yeah, that, I mean that's not a a bad idea. It could be 
you know, this this could be, you know, Slaughter Cinema's new silver screen presentation. Of yeah, theater. that'd be cool. Yeah. Like under Mannequin Theater, it says like a, a Slaughter Cinema film. Hey, yeah. Hey, who knows? Or in the house, they have like Easter egg references to Slaughter Cinema. Oh, uh, yeah. Who knows? Well, that was very well executed maze last year, by the way. Yeah. Let's take a look here. All right. So I'm going to save one for the end. Um, the, the so E is what would typically be in uh, where last year House of a Thousand Corpses was. And right. prior years, we had Blumhouse. Right. Um, and that's the anniversary house. Now, the anniversary house leaves a lot to the imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much that could go in there. Um, but the, the next one kind of eliminates some of the things that maybe there would be in the anniversary house unless they double up, which would be icons. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that too because we, we got that little like synopsis of what they filmed in that commercial per se. So maybe that can eliminate some op options of what might be in the anniversary house. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think there there will definitely be some references to Cary O or Cary Ohio, however right. <laughs> you, you want to say it. Um, there'll be some references to prior years as far as like um, what the theming was. I, yeah. I think maybe we'll we'll go through an area that was 80s themed because the the 80, 80s themed years were and we had Stranger Things for both years. Um, were some of the most heavily attended years. So right. if you're trying to feed towards that that uh, audience, hopefully returning, um, that this would be a perfect opportunity. But right. there, there's so much that's gone on through the event. This is 30 years. That anniversary house has so much to like bring out. And, and maybe some because the icon years were really later on in the in the in the Halloween Horror Nights. Um, kind of timeline right maybe some of the earlier icons that you wouldn't necessarily consider or icons of halloween horror nights can be in there like um the care or not the caretaker um now now i forget oh uh uh the crypt keeper um yeah storyteller maybe yeah maybe storyteller some of the the more uh i, I guess uh, for lack of a better word entry level Right. Icons. And then, uh, well, before I, I move on, uh, what do you think about the Anniversary House? So Anniversary House, in order, and I know what we're going to talk about next because we kind of already mentioned it, but the Horror Nights icons. Uh, just to give you a little rundown of what we might be seeing in that um, that Horror Icons maze, um, of course, they. this is just, I don't know if this is true or not, but a lot of people, uh, I guess one person went on the forums on InsideUniversal.net. It started kind of writing down a bunch of stuff that a, a HHN commercial is in production right now, and stuff this is, that's been that's been seen. Um, this could kind of relate to maybe what will be inside the Horror Nights Icons maze, and that is, of course, um, icons that were seen. Of course, were Jack the Clown, obviously uh, being, of course, one of the biggest uh, icons that I think Halloween Horror Nights has ever had. Really, I mean, he's he's really famous with the crowds and and really has a, a really great following. So we have Jack the Clown, uh, the Usher. Uh, Sid, uh, uh, Cindy, Eddie, and Chance were seen uh, filming for production today or, or this week. So, see, and, and this is where so transitioning into the Horror Nights icons, that that would be interesting because although Eddie is uh, an icon, he never truly made it out into the the big screen because um, that was during the year of nine eleven. So right. they ended up pulling a lot of the gore back and Eddie was supposed to be uh, Jack's like brother or stepbrother. Um, shout out to everybody named Eddie. You know what I'm saying? Dope Eddie man. dog, you're Jack's stepbrother. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I could see somebody like that being more in the anniversary house just because he never truly became an icon of the event. Yeah. Um, really. I, I, I would love to hear from some of the Horror Nights Orlando fan base on who they consider the true icons because when it comes down to it, I think the true icons are really three. Yeah. And well, four, sorry, four. And those four are Jack, the caretaker, the director, and the usher. Those okay. are really the four that I, I think come back are, time and time again. Yeah, and, and they're like they 
they they really made a name for themselves during their year. Um, I, I know that there there's been other icons like Bloody Mary and things like that, but those are like IP icons, you know. That could be a good for anniversary house too. Bloody yeah, but, but it's not like an original icon. When I think of the icons of Halloween Horror Nights, I think of the original icons. Uh, right. Maybe Storyteller as well, um, but but really those four are the ones that were original thoughts created and they, they they made an amazing backstory for them and an amazing uh website for them at that time when the websites were really interactive so right. horror nights icons i'm a huge huge fan of the icon years so this although it's speculated shall not be removed from the speculation map and should 100 percent be at the event this year yes i agree definitely because it's the 30 year anniversary man you gotta you gotta Reminisce on the past 30 years that made you guys successful. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got you to gotta put some respect on their name, you know? Yeah, you want to give the fans <laughs> a great year and a, a year to talk about. This would be that, that year. And I'm hoping we get to go. I know we said we weren't, but it's not looking too good with SoCal Haunts out here. Horror Night's looking like the only one that's going to open. So we might actually have the extra money to go out there this year. So we'll see what's up. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm hoping we can. Your, your budget may be only usable in Orlando. <laughs> right. Um. Bedtime stories, the tooth fairy, though, man. This could be honestly a, a good, maybe. I so I don't. I'm not too familiar with the bedtime stories. Is this where the storyteller comes in, or is this something completely different? So I, I think so. Um, I, I think bedtime bedtime stories. There, there was supposed to be a tooth fairy house last year, and then um, that house got scrapped for uh, Jordan Peele's uh, us. Us, yes. Um, I don't know what went down there that, that got scrapped, but this is this is a, a great opportunity for the storyteller to make an appearance. But for her to get a whole entire house sounds a little crazy. Yeah. Uh, and mostly when they're jumbling the horror icons into a, one house. Like, if, if they were going to do that, then bedtime stories should disappear. They should jumble her into the horror icons. And then Jack or one of those four that we just spoke of, they should get their own house. So that's why I think that maybe it's not the storyteller but it could because hurt. the way this is the way i looked at it like the storyteller of course with bedtime stories maybe you just see her in the beginning of the maze and then you hear her voice throughout the maze telling a story but you don't really necessarily see her maybe you only see her at the beginning and the end of the maze um but the entire maze is the story and you're hearing the story the yeah. words come out through her voice which this, would be really cool this could also be a, a derivative of scary tales okay. uh, scary tales was basically a house where they took all the the kid tales and twisted them into something a little bit horror like um like Humpty Dumpty and uh Wicked Witch of the West was in the entrance I don't know if you ever saw the the entryway facade and she's actually flying on her broomstick over you that's cool uh, you're entering the house so this could be a derivative of that as well um but once again um if I'm looking through the whole entire event something like that getting paid homage when none of the icons are necessarily getting their own house would be would be interesting right no i agree we'll see what happens with that one i mean i'm, I'm all for the originals man they usually kick ass on the originals yeah. uh scare zones everything's unknown except one which is creep show oh yeah and that's that scare zone is scare zone O. Uh, which is right which, by jay yeah which is where last year they had um uh geez now the the name's gonna escape me but it was the plastic surgery um, oh, like a vanity ball or something. Vanity ball. There we go. Um, that was vanity ball last year, which I enjoyed. Um, I had a a friend who was actually a scare actor there. I've heard some negative comments about it recently, which I'm surprised I didn't hear anything uh, closer to the event. Right. I, I thought it did pretty well. So um, that's that scare zone has always been a, a decent one for me, and I, I've always liked it because it opens up into the lagoon if you're walking from the entrance out. Right. Uh, but uh, Creep Show is something that is like a cult classic. So uh, any horror fan is going to be excited about about Creep Show coming. And I, I and I heard that Creep Show was amazing last year at your event. So yeah, so they they mixed the movie with the uh, the new show, which was really cool. Um, and I really enjoyed that aspect, um, especially watching the new show. Very good show. Um, Greg Nicotero, uh, producer on The Walking Dead. Is an executive producer on this and does all the, the makeup and stuff for this as well. Um, did a very good job with it. I have not finished the show yet, but from the episodes that I've watched were amazing. So if they're going to base this around the TV show, uh, I think you guys are going to be in good hands because um, 
you know, there's a lot of good uh, monsters and stuff that they can work with, and especially with the announcement of season two happening, and they're already looking at a season three. Um, that's really good that uh, they can really further promote uh, another season. It looks like you're kind of getting the uh, the uh, the Hollywood treatment, though. You know what I mean? Where we always used to get your guys' uh, sloppy seconds. Now you're getting yeah. our sloppy seconds. Yeah, and you know what? This year, just like you, that you're just happy that the event is happening. Yeah. Um, the event is happening. So I'll, I'll take your sloppy seconds. That's okay. <laughs> um, and then you <laughs> and got Academy got, of Villains and Lagoon. Yeah, we got shows. So Academy of Villains, um, I, I think that's going to be their third year now, or maybe fourth. Because um, I know originally they, they had like a show on the streets. And then this may be either their second or third year at the um, the Fear Factor stage. Um, there were there was rumors of Bill and Ted coming, so I'm still holding my breath that this is this is one of the things that's wrong on the map as far as speculation goes. And right. Bill and Ted are making their return for the 30th year anniversary. Um, Academy of the Villains is cool, but unlike your show, it's not air conditioned so yeah. it's hot as hell in florida during that time of the year also um just a quick side note since we're talking about academy of villains i actually on on twitter the other day i guess one of the members of the show uh passed away she was only 22 years old her yeah. name was uh cc ayala um so god rest her soul um yeah. I, I don't know the specifics of how she passed away but uh that's a very young age to to, to move on uh she still had her whole life ahead of her um so our condolences to uh, Cece Ayala. Um, sure. I have never, I, I actually never got to see. I don't, I really don't know who she is in the show or anything. So I, I don't know. I've never got to see her work. Um, but I'm pretty sure like you or other fans have probably seen her, not knowing it was her. But 22, man, that that's a sad age to die, man. She had her whole life ahead of her. Yeah, that's crazy. So, I mean, on, on that note, I I will just say that the Academy of Villains I watched once two years ago when I was there for my. Um, for the media media pass and i sat next to mike aiello so yeah they they hold a special place in my heart as far as like what they remind me of yeah not something that i would frequent just because um it gets really hot in there and <laughs> i i like to get the houses out the way i like to focus on the houses right the next thing on there is a lagoon show this is they they haven't said what's going to be at the lagoon show the lagoon show last year was freaking phenomenal amazing yeah, amazing. It was ridiculous what they did with those with Stranger those. Things, Killer Clowns. They pretty much put all their properties together and just made a yeah. great show. Those water screens are amazing, and they they've also utilized them for daytime shows as well, yeah. where you see like uh, the Minions and Jurassic World and things of that nature. So they there's a lot that they could do with those water screens. And last year, I, I thought the the Lagoon Show was probably one of the most epic things that they brought to the event. Very creative, very different. Um, right. So. This is an opportunity where I see we can use Billie Eilish better. So hopefully the Billie Eilish rumor is just getting mixed up. Yeah. And really it's Billie Eilish Lagoon Show, which in that perspective, I would respect 100%. And I would be like, bring Billie Eilish on because I think she could kill this um, and support it 100%. So I'm just glad they're not doing Universal Monsters, The Bride, music by Billie Eilish at your event. Because I know that was rumored at one point. I know, that'd be funny. I had a dream. I oh, had God. everything I wanted. Don't start singing. Yeah. Don't start singing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that pretty much does it for both maps this year uh, as far as the speculation goes from HN Nightmares. Uh, a huge shout-out to HN Nightmares. We really thank you for putting these together and giving us something to speculate on. Um, we hear that you get a lot of these right. So uh, we are – I'm pretty much look, I'm pretty much set with my event. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I can't wait to see – what's going to happen this year and it's definitely going to be an interesting take of course with the whole pandemic going on but uh we'll see how everything goes man i'm very much looking forward to uh halloween horror nights 2020 yeah so am i i mean uh, i'm just happy at the fact that it looks like it's going to happen things yeah. in the right direction and um you know not just universal all the theme parks in orlando and california seem like they're taking things seriously and making the right steps so um you know the, these are all escapes for us not just for us horror fans but sometimes you know the world is tough shit like what's going on right now is pretty tough and there's yeah. other things before this that have always been pretty tough and going to these theme parks has always been a nice escape so yeah uh, i'm glad the event is coming i'm glad that we're seeing things reopen i i, yeah. I think i just want to end it by saying everybody be responsible 
if you're if you're not with the protocol, then you know stay at home, take your time. There's no rush. But those who are ready to accept the protocol and you know respect everybody else's well being, let's do this. Let's go out there. Yeah. And let's be responsible human beings and you know make the best of it while making sure that we're taking care of everybody else. It's not Couldn't just- agree more. Couldn't agree more. To end this, man, uh, before we go, we want to plug in, even though I I have, I have filmed a whole separate video for this now uh, for every video that I put up, but we're going to plug in merch. Uh, we have East vs. West merch. Eddie is wearing the East vs. West t-shirt. You can buy right now on our Teespring store. Link is in the description below, as well as Teespring um, stickers, long sleeve shirts. I'm also working, uh, I might be working on hats and beanies pretty soon, so that could be coming pretty right. soon so we'll see if that happens because it looks like teespring is opening up uh embroidery now so that's that's looking good man i'm, I'm excited for that um but thank you everyone for watching uh east versus west another episode we will try to get another episode out uh pretty soon and we'll find out something to talk about don't know yet but until then i'm anthony and i'm eddie and don't forget to ask yourself have you been eddie tamed hey <laughs> later <laughs>